Uh, I just like doing a lot of firsts and someone told me that no one's rocked up with a robe so I just came down. No, I just feel like mum's always told me just for comfort, not style, but I think this does both. <laughs> Very well. Let's talk about your return. I mean, you took some time off. Can you talk about the, the, the reason that you, you took the time off? Yeah, so put it bluntly, I took time off because... I, I'll, keep, I'll keep everything blunt because I, I always talk sometimes. Yeah. Put it bluntly, got depression. Like, I won't talk about how it happened, it's just like if you push things away, it's like an injury, you know, if you get an injury and you're just like, I'll just keep, I'll just keep training, limp, limp away with it, it's like mentally I had like an injury, and um, it all came to the fray kind of after Singapore because got the bonus, knocked this dude out, a lot of, like, a little bit of fame and uh, money and stuff, so I realised that I was, dr my drive for a little while to get into UFC was what I perceived as money and fame, you know, like, what, you know, it's like, oh, this career, it's like flashy, flashy, I want that, but um, it brought to fray that uh, I felt empty afterwards, I wasn't actually happy, and then I had to go back home, I had to go back home to Marae Nui Napier to reconnect with my family, uh, to reconnect with Te Ao Māori, like the Māori world, and that really rooted me back to the real reasons why I started fighting, which was to basically get to this platform and spread a positive message and uh, yeah, that's what it is. I was gonna ask you, I mean, I don't wanna push too much, but I mean, yeah. I think that could be educational for people. I mean, here you are, you're on top of the world, right? I yeah. mean, a win, it's not after a loss, you know what I mean? It's a win, it's a bonus, oh, yeah. everything's great. I mean, you're you're one of the baddest dudes on the planet, right? And you're saying, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not good, I gotta take some time away. I mean, what message did you take out of that that the other people that maybe hear this can learn from? Yeah, I think it's just, uh, I think I was real lucky my body brought everything. I basically started crying right now. And I was like, why am I crying randomly when I have like lots of money now and lots of fame, all these things that I thought I wanted. That's why, because I thought I wanted them so much that I was willing to, you know, we've risked so much out there in the cage. You're, I'm taking years off my life. At the end of my life, my, my grandkids won't be able to experience me or live, you know, they might not even see me or whatever. That's the risk that we take. And if you're just taking that for money and for people to be like, you're the man, that's messed up, man. So. It reminded me I needed to know why I really did it and I think it just made me way more powerful and you've got to listen to that to that to that voice inside yourself and for me that voice was a dark voice for a period of time that's when I that's why I had to take that time off um, yeah when did you know I'm good now I'm ready hey, you know what put me back in I'm ready to go uh, I knew when I came back when I came back from um, Napier and I kind of knew it's like first two days there I was reconnecting with my family, seeing all these beautiful Māori kids running around, talking to the kids in the hood. I come from Marae Nui Napier, it's, it's, it's the hood. But a beautiful place. It, it's beautiful if you're from there. You know, if you're not from there, you'll be like, oh, you got to wear a bulletproof vest to go from Marae Nui, yay, ha, ha, ha. Like, that's not fun. Um, if you're from there, it's a beautiful spot. And uh, those first two days, I realized, I was like, man, this is what, this was fulfilling me. Seeing these Māori kids and them saying, bro, I'm so inspired by you, bro. Like, I want to do more of my life. Like, I don't want to do gangs. And uh, me reciprocating that with like good, yeah. what I could yeah. tell them. And I was basically at the point where I was either gonna yeah. fully commit to fighting for these guys, or I was done. And I was really, it was that, and I had to decide. And it, that, it took six weeks, but um, the six weeks really was just reaffirming that this was always what I wanted. I never actually wanted to not fight. I always wanted to fight, but it was like, I had to push it to that brick to really make myself believe that this is why I wanted to do it. And I found my why and that's to promote Māori culture, spread it uh, everywhere I can like an infection because it's an indigenous culture just like Aboriginal people and it's about being more connected with the land and I want to see that symbiotic relationship of like in, uh, traditional values mixed with like modern technology and our, you know, all the stuff we have here. There's no reason that we can't sustain this and make it better for the future for our, for our kids. Very cool. And last thing for me, I mean, knowing all this and this full circle that you come, what's the emotion going to be like on, on fight night? And what's, what's the feeling going to be stepping oh, it's in gonna the cage? Be, yeah, she's going to be me. Just whatever I want to do, I just make it happen. Just visualize and execute. That's all I've been doing. I was ready. As soon as I announced it, I was like, yep, me, sweet. I kind of already picked it out. Actually, the funny thing, I told my coach too, because I was looking at the sure dog things. When I knew I was ready, I was like looking at people and I was like, he was like 70 or something, like a little bit above me. I was like, yeah, that American dude. And then, boom, they picked that fella, so I almost picked the fella, eh? Hey? So that's got to be a good thing. And New Zealand MMA is obviously going to go through an explosion with all you guys coming out here and representing on the UFC. Yeah. But locally back home, there's not too much going on around the scene. You know, you're a former XFC champion, which yeah. is really a strange promotion that kind of goes over there. What do you reckon that uh, needs to happen over there? 
Well, uh, we, Kai, myself, and Israel put tail in of it. We're lucky to have a few good shows on our come up, and thankfully, it made us so tough because we were just fighting other tough little nuggets like ourselves, you know, like some Kiwis are almost too tough for their own good. You see with the brother Daniel Hooker, it's moment, we got so much heart and will uh, that we can show. But uh, I think what needs to happen with um, New Zealand MMA is just oh, nothing. It's going to happen. You'll see it. Like, we'll all see it because we're just the tip of the tie hard, you know, tip of the spear right now, just breaking through. This is the first one. There's three of us fighting on a UFC card. This is the first time. It's like a big event. Many years come, we're still young, all of us are young, we're going to take this thing over. So, and we've got plenty of dudes in our stable ready to come to UFC. And when they come, you know, say we've got like 10 guys in the UFC now, they're going to inspire so many more kids. i got so many, i got 14, 15 year old kids coming up to me, but like, I'm going to beat you one day, I'm going to get them. I say, yeah boy, that's what I want to hear, you know, like that's, it's, there'll be a second wave. This is the first wave, there'll be another wave, it'll, it'll be continuous, yeah. And uh, how do you sort of contain that Maori warrior spirit? We've seen it right at the end of your last fight. Mm -hmm. No, they really come out, but staying technical at the same time. Yeah, it's um, well, Māori have always like there's a, a little uh, thing, it's like uh, my language is my strength and ornament of grace. And that uh, we're talking about language here, but that the culture means the same thing as well. And that, that it's an adornment of grace. It's like I tried to that last one, obviously, wasn't too graceful, like, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's a balance, it's a forever a process, you know. I'm never, I'm not ever going to be a complete fighter when you see me fighting four fights from now i'll look totally different to this fight and i think i'll look totally different to that last fight so it's a it's yeah it's that balance of holding in that mana that we have that uh, that bulldogness that we can have but yeah letting it come out through in a skillful way cool oh okay. i think um what is exactly um i'm not gonna say it wrong watangi day waitangi day. Waitangi. Yeah, so yeah, yesterday so. was waitangi day which was the day that the treaty of waitangi a place in new zealand basically when uh the british oh, should i give you guys a little history Go for it. so <laughs> i can give you the one version and then the truth version so one version <laughs> is that the the uh, british came and colonized new zealand well early was the missionaries and they brought the the, the bible and we, as Māori, because Māori are just people that will just let you in, we'll give you food, we'll give you the shirt off my back. Like, every Māori I've ever met is like that. Even the scummy ones, like, you know, there's scummy people in every part, but they're all like that. And we, as a, as a people, let the missionaries in, and then following that was uh, the British colonizers. And then they, we basically had this weird, trying to be a symbiotic relationship, but it wasn't working out, so they wrote, wrote a treaty. They made it in Māori, and a treaty in English. A treaty in Māori, said one thing, the treaty in English said a total different thing. We signed the Māori treaty, they signed the English treaty, and this has been what's happened from now. Basically, they took away a lot of our lands and stuff. Like, I don't get into that because I'm half white, you know, I'm, part, I'm like colonizer and colonized. So that was that thing. But the real truth is what I'm realizing now is that what Waitangi Day was, like they brought the Bible with us, and then while our eyes were closed and we were praying to the Lord, they took our lands away and then we opened them up. Like, that's what we're left with now. But and saying that you can be you know upset and be like oh if the white men if pakeha whatever like don't hang out with them but really what we need to do is just give it love and just tell them hey how about you be part of our culture because i see it with a lot of people they want to be inclusive into maori culture they see the they see how like pumped i get just going outside and enjoying nature and they want to be part of that um but yeah, back to question waitangi day was a day that was marred with a lot of bad stuff uh, a lot of deception but I think in the future, say in 10 years, it'll be a, it'll be a total different day. We'll be talking about the, it's a true independence day.